winning the war, liking yourself, now not how. Three things I learned this week. First two from Ed Milet, last one from Noah Kagan. Winning the war, what does it mean? It looks like progress over perfection. Roger Federer, who many believe is the, the greatest tennis player of all time, arguably, Roger Federer won 84% of his matches, but only 52% of his points. Let me say that again. He won 84% of his matches, but only 52% of his points. I don't know about you. To me, that says, wow, he, he lost the battle almost as many times as he, he won the battle. But he almost always won the war, which means he must have learned from those lost battles. He must have learned from all those lost points. I, I no, we we say it a lot, like it's it's such a it's a buzz word or like a buzz phrase, but it's learn from your mistakes, right? But hot dang, man, it is easier said than done, right? Especially because when we're making those mistakes, it's potentially an emotional situation, right? And and it's tough for everybody. I don't care who you are. It's tough to maintain that emotional intelligence that's required to to keep the grand perspective of this is just a battle. I have not lost the war. So it's how we deal with lost points, right? And I, I'll be frank with you. I, I recently lost a point. I made a bad investment. Very grateful that that it I didn't lose at all, right? I got my money back, but it was a lot of time, energy, and resources dumped into something that essentially was a it was a loss. You know, I I lost that battle. But I have learned so much through it. And it was, it was tough to see because at the time I thought it was the war. At the time I thought this one investment was the entire shebang. It, it was, it was, you know, how I was going to make a million dollars, this and that. But I realized that I was going through it. The first about six months, uh, actually the first about uh, nine to 12 months were, it was a lot of losing and not much learning from that losing. And so with that, it was, uh, I was able to turn the corner and realize, hey, this is just a battle and that sometimes we have to lose those battles. Sometimes we have to lose those points. In fact, here in like Roger Federer, a lot of times, a lot of times you have to lose the points in order to win the war. So that was the first thing. Next thing was that you have to bring you with you. This is also from Ed Milet. I, man, this one hits home. I ran a marathon a couple years ago. Uh, it was during 2020, you know, I didn't really have anything going. I couldn't really get a job. I, uh, and, and I just, I looked at my bucket list and I said, you know what? There's no reason I'm not working towards something on here. And so I said, oh, marathon, boom, done. Let's do it. So I went and I trained for six months and, and whatever this and that. But during those six months, a lot changed, right? And this is a, uh, there's another lesson in here that I think we can extrapolate. But during that time, I, I was training for a marathon which is pretty time intensive if, if you've never done it before. You know, you start from zero and, you know, you go from running zero hours a day to running, you know, one hour a day, then two hours, and then three hours. And, you know, you got these these long training sessions and you just, a lot of things change. You got to go to bed sooner. You got to wake up earlier. You got to eat different. You got to say no to more, right? Well, during that time, I also decided to start a business. And during that time, this other, this investment I was just telling you about, that, that kind of just got kicked off. And there was just, uh, oh, then I did end up getting a job, right? So there was just, there was a lot going on and it really changed me. And in a lot of ways, it changed me for the better. In a lot of ways, it changed me for the better. I became a more disciplined person, became really keen on, on what it is I, what it is that brings me joy. But also, in some ways, it made me hate myself. I dealt with two or three years of really working on myself. And, and I, I was, to put it bluntly, I was never really a jerk before I ran the marathon. And then afterwards, man, all of a sudden, I, I caught myself snapping on people. And I caught myself being much more emotionally unpredictable. And I, I felt myself being much more selfish. And it took me two or three years. I'm still working on that. Everybody's working on that all the time. But when Ed Milet said, you have to bring you with you, that really hit home because yes, I ran the marathon. I, I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. 
but man, if you don't, if you get where you're going, but you don't like who you become along the way, then there's, there's no sense in even getting there, right? So you got to bring you with you. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, what profit is to a man who gains the whole world, but forfeits his soul. And I think a lot of times we can look at that and we can say, oh yeah, money's bad. I won't sell my soul for money, but also what happens when we replace the word profit with achievement and accolades, right? And certifications and education and these things that that are generally good, but we know, we know that they are not as good as God, right? And so what benefit is it for a man to have checked everything off of his bucket list and have lived an adventurous, educated, fulfilling life. But when he gets to the end of his life, if he doesn't have a soul, then it doesn't matter. Right. And so in the same way, you have to take you with you, no matter, no matter where you're going, no matter who you are, you got to take you with you. Last thing is now, not how by Noah Kagan. I've quoted this before. I love this quote. And it's the reason this video looks like crap. (laughs) <laughs> it's the reason that this video is being recorded on a cell phone that's being propped up on a water bottle. Uh, look at my laptop here and uh, I've got pretty horrible lighting and I'm in a kitchen and, and I thought, oh, I know I can make this better. Cinematic mode record. Uh, <laughs> two things I want to point out here. I've been putting this video off for a long time. I've been I've been wanting to get back to making content on YouTube for three or four months now. Two observations. Uh, number one, I wanted to make this video. I could have made this video. I, I knew I, I needed to make this video in order to accomplish, you know, my goals. But for some reason, and we can credit it to the Acrasia effect, I think, for some reason, I just didn't for a long, long time. We all do that. And if we're not intentional about turning it around, it never will. And that's the that's what I want to leave you with here and why now, not how is so important about just doing the thing not preparing for the thing, not writing about the thing, not thinking about the thing, not wanting the thing, not dreaming about the thing, not talking to other people who may or may not be doing the thing, but actually doing the thing. By the way, I think that was a Chris Williamson quote. We can say to ourselves, it's just one rest day for every day of our lives. And what I mean by that is I've said to myself, I'll make the video tomorrow every day for the last three or four months. And I think a lot of times, you know, at least me, I I think about like, there's no way so many people could have done such a bad thing. No, no, it's, it's possible, right? It's not a, like so much of life is not a game of predictability and percentages. And what are the odds of that? Right. It's a game of human psychology and willpower. And so how often or how many times have you said, I'm going to get back in the gym tomorrow? but you've been saying that for two, three months, right? And a lot of times we don't even realize we've been saying it for so long until unless we write it down on paper. That's why I'm such a fiend about tracking my habits now is because I would have so many highs and so many lows because I would say, oh man, my fitness has never been better. I am so consistent in the gym when in reality, if I'd been tracking my habits, I'd seen, man, I'd only been in the gym like five out of the last six days. Like that was, (laughs) that was really it. Or man, I'm just, I'm so out of shape. I'm never going to be able to get back to where I was and this and that. When in reality, if I'd been tracking my habits, if I'd been, you know, keeping a log of, of my workouts and I would have seen that, hey, I, 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 I've I really only, it's only really only been two weeks since I've been in the gym. Not the end of the world. I can get back in there. Right. And so we can say to ourselves tomorrow, we can say to ourselves, it's just one day. We can repeat that to ourselves over and over and over and over again to the point where our entire life just becomes a giant, you know, compilation of almost. Those are the three things I wanted to leave you with. The three things that that made my life better this week that I think could make your life better. Progress over perfection, right? The battle is not nearly as important as the war. You have to bring you with you and do the thing now, not how. Thanks for listening. Back back soon.